Hello there, ever listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about Wind Daughter. Ooh, to me. By Joanna Ruth Meyer. Uh, this is a companion novel to Echo North. Echo North. But in case you're wondering, no, you don't have to have read Echo North in order to really appreciate this story um this is probably the third novel of Myers that I read and I'm quickly becoming a fan of hers um that being said this is the second novel I've read of hers that is a companion novel it takes place um within the same universe of a previous novel she's written <coughs> And I want to highlight that because I think it really is essential. Uh, when you're reading a series, definitely you have to read previous novels in order to appreciate what's going on. You know, you can't read book two without reading book one. Companion novels are different. They are taken up within the same universe but they tend to have um, very little to do with the previous novel. They may mention the same characters. It, of course, takes place in the same world. But it is, a, it is its own story that focuses on its own characters. <coughs> and that's why I say Mayer is very talented. Especially with Wind Daughter. There are many elements in this story that are mentioned in Echo North. Again, I haven't read Echo North. I'm alluding to the fact that she's recapping, but she's not recapping in a very tedious way. I like the way Mayer brings in elements from... Echo North, and it makes me want to read Echo North really much more, um, in, in any case. <coughs> she tells Echo North like a fairy tale to Satu, and Satu's the wind's daughter, and he's a natural storyteller. So she knows the story, and through her, we know the story. We know the important parts that are going to affect Satu's narrative. And ultimately, I think that's what makes the story so good. Everything just... It's a very layered story. And all these different layers, all they do is add to the storytelling. They make the novel so compelling and I think the publisher's right to call this a haunting fairy tale I mean that's what it says if you go on um, Goodreads on Amazon you know that little blurb is there it is a hauntingly beautiful fairy tale and they're not wrong as I was reading this book I was drawn in immediately there is such an eye for detail in her storytelling. And it just makes the entire novel... <sighs> it makes it very warm. Um, <laughs> uh, what I think is really funny is the author herself has said this book, e this book is Frozen meets Raylo meets Doctor Who. <laughs> and I definitely see all those elements, you know. When she says that she has a cool little TikTok on it too. I think that that's great. Um, and it works. And even though it takes place. You know. With the winter lord. Chasing after Satu. Because he also wants the wind's power. Um, for himself. Just like Satu does. But she wants it so that she can save the world from the unraveling. 
what I think is really good is the landscape may look frigid, but the story itself is so full of warmth. To me, when I was reading this, I was absolutely comforted. It felt like a warm blanket on a cold winter's night. I mean, it's just very gravitating. It's very thoughtful. It's very warm. And you feel the connections bleed off the page. You feel the magic that is coursing through Saw to grow and grow and grow. And that's why I say the publisher is right in their claim to call this a hauntingly beautiful fairy tale. I mean, it is. It is definitely a fairy tale. And it's new. And it's something different. And I love that about it. I love how we're following Satu's journey as she grows in magic. And she grows into herself as well. She's always had this form of social anxiety. That I think anyone with social anxiety can understand. But instead of treating it and treating her differently... um. I like the normalcy, you know, we, we tend to stigmatize people who have social anxiety, um, not as much as we used to, but we, we tend to do that. Oh, sorry. Huh. Uh, but I like how Mayor normalizes it. She has anxiety. And this anxiety wants to just keep her home. So she just stays home. She doesn't go to school. She tried. It didn't work out. And instead of forcing, you know, instead of telling her, you know, suck it up. You have to go to school. Her, fa- her parents were like, okay. Didn't work out. We will homeschool you then. And that's what they do. Um, you know, she she gets uncomfortable and overwhelmed around large groups of people but in order to save everyone that's when she really starts to push herself and she doesn't really overcome her anxieties you know I don't think people really just oh they get over their anxieties and that's another thing I like about Mayer she normalizes having social anxiety but she also normalizes the fact that you can have a social anxiety And there are different levels of it. You can have anxiety and still become a hero without getting rid of it. It's just a matter of, I guess, letting it control you versus you controlling how you handle your anxiety. It's still there. It's definitely still there for our main character near the end, but she learns how to accept it as a part of herself, which makes handling it a little bit better versus letting it just control her life and isolate her. And it's a long journey for her to take that, just like it would be a long journey in real life for anyone to overcome their anxiety. That's what makes it a really good narrative because we're following this character as she grows and she does grow. She becomes so fierce by the end, even though she still has her anxiety, but she's no longer letting it just control her and isolate her herself. She is learning how to handle it on her own terms. You know, no one's forcing her to handle it. She's learning how to handle it herself and accept it as part of herself instead of just erasing it and pushing it down and forgetting it ever existed. I like that normalcy. As someone who does have, you know, some, a mild form of social anxiety, As someone who does have 
anxiety and it comes in burst um I really did appreciate the normalcy with which Meyer approached it um instead of just kind of stigmatizing it which is I guess another reason why I love the story because I was really able to connect to Satu she again there's such warmth you know from her to cultivating her beehive and loving her bees and being so strongly connected to the people she cares deeply about and rising to the occasion after everything is un- literally the world is unraveling around her people she loves are disappearing in front of her faces they're unraveling they are becoming non-existent right in front of her to see that and to see her not become so broken and it's it would have been so easy for her to just crawl inside herself and just let the world unravel <coughs> sorry but instead she rises to the occasion she harnesses the magic she takes in the magic and she becomes a formidable character and the pacing you know it's it's not a super fast-paced novel there are parts of it that are really fast-paced especially when you're getting closer to the end i was just like i had to stop myself from reading so fast because of how fast the pacing was going and how invested i was in the story i was just like i need to know i need to know i need to see what's gonna happen next like ah satu you have to save everyone you know i was just i had to control myself and rein myself in so that I could absorb. I don't want to miss a, I didn't want to miss a thing, you know? <clears throat> I didn't want to miss a word when I was reading it. But, you know, I love that building tension. I love that bit rising momentum and that rising tension. I think the story is written, again, in a very beautiful way to really draw the reader in. She sucks you in. She supplants you there. And for me, like I said, it very much was very warm to read. I could definitely... It was warm. I I mean, I felt like I was sitting around a warm campfire listening to someone tell such a wonderful fairy tale. That's what it was for me. And that's why I'd say reading it was like a warm drink, a warm blanket draped over me on a winter's night. It was comforting. It was cozy. It was beautiful. And I think Meyer's really good at creating new and unique fairy tales that are haunting. I mean, Into the Heartless Wood uh, had the same effect, you know, with that novel. And I absolutely love that novel. She has a way with creating a warm atmosphere with her story that just nestles you and she submerges you in the story and the characters you feel what they feel you become invested in who they are and I think that that's absolutely wonderful that she's able to do that so I'm going to give one daughter four and a half out of five stars not quite five but oh god it's it's up there I uh, absolutely love Mayor's writing um, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book please remember to purchase the book from your online book seller or online book retailer all I ask is to purchase the book off of something that's not Amazon um, you can also check out the book from your local library and I hope you all continue to support me here by liking this podcast sharing it with all your book loving friends and subscribing Have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.